What have the nation been talking about this week? Saddam Hussein got found guilty this week. They said, you must stand up for the verdict, and he wouldn't stand up. And so they got these two court officers to help him up, and he was picking one up, and he turned to him, and he said, get off me, don't make me bend, you ugly man. <laughs> and I thought, no, he's showing his true colours now. <laughs> I liked him up to that, but that's just, <laughs> that's just bloody rude. That. He said he didn't want to be hung, he wanted to be shot like a soldier, didn't he? I think it's time we compromised. Do both. <laughs> Swing him up by his feet, get him swinging like that. Three shots a pound, come on. <laughs> Maybe that's why he looks so disappointed, because he wanted to be shot. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. don't be hard. <laughs> it's a bit like at Christmas if, uh, if you want a bike and you get a jigsaw. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. You know they're going to kill him for bad things he did to lots of people. I had an idea that they should kill him the way... You know when they pulled down his statue and they dragged it slightly with cars and, uh, and tanks? And, you know, I've, you've seen the news. <laughs> I think they should do the same with him and kill him in that way. You'll get lots of children, you know, to recreate that dragging down of the statue. Put it, and then put a bit of rope round him with tiny little cars, little pe- What are you looking like that for? <laughs> <laughs> this is like watching the news, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> and then you just drag him out of the room and he'll kind of fall in half at one point and then they can, everyone can just jump on his head. <laughs> the thing I thought about him was that... Hold on a second, you can't just move straight off. Yeah. <laughs> you're saying, what you're saying is they should push him over. They should slowly... <laughs> uh, uh, they you to death by pushing over. Yeah. <laughs> in America, they don't have executions. This is totally Christian-driven, too, because in America, they don't have executions on Sundays or Mondays, because on Sundays, God don't want to see no new people on his day off. <laughs> <laughs> And then you don't want to have your people executing nobody on Monday because you just back to work. You, take- <laughs> <laughs> you should be ready to murder somebody by Wednesday, really. You must have done some good for someone. Is it Mr. Hussein? He must have done some good for someone. Yeah, there must be some good things in Iraq. He was very good to his mum. Yeah. <laughs> Did he kill her? Uh, did he kill her? Yeah. I, did yeah, he kill why not? He's not going to sue us. <laughs> yeah. Saddam Hussein killed his mum. <laughs> Come get me. <laughs> Good. Well, should we have a look and see if Saddam is one of the most talked about things this week? Of course he is. The most talked about thing this week. <laughs> Saddam has been sentenced to death by hanging. He thought he found a loophole. No, Saddam, that's a noose. <laughs> sure, Louis and Reese, what have the nation been talking about this week? Four-year-old girl's depressed. She's a bit down. And uh, she takes her to the doctor and they said, he said, yes, yeah, she's depressed. Instead of what he should have done, actually, when he went to her, he should have listened to all her symptoms. He should have gone, hold on a sec. Boom! <laughs> and he has been fine. <laughs> Apparently, the reason this girl is depressed is because she didn't get into the right primary school. Mm. Mm. That was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the reason she didn't get in is because her parents didn't put the application in time. So the reason she's depressed is, she, is that her parents are a couple of... She tried to slit her wrist with stickle bricks. <laughs> well, that's a nice image, yeah. She put her head in the oven, but it's one of those little plastic ones, it's fine. <laughs> I, when I was four, I used to get Randy, I used to rub myself against a chair leg. Honestly, <laughs> and my mum would go, stop that, it's naughty. And my dad said, don't tell him to don't stop, he's Welsh. He said, don't tell him to stop, because he might go funny in the head. And I think I did it till I was about 14. <laughs> Get on a chair leg and rub like that. On a chair leg and. That's funny. Well, how they spotted it? I mean, I don't know how they actually identified her depression. I She's not listening to you know Leonard Cohen in a room. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of sit up there smoking. I mean, there's, I uh, she, she, she's up in her room listening to the Tweenies' very difficult second album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether this four-year-old depressed girl is one of the most talked-about things of the week. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. That's what On their first mission, 75% of astronauts what? Never left Earth. <laughs> Do you think they landed on the moon? Do you think that's a genuine thing? Nah. Well, you can see the shadows of the photos. Well, there's proof if ever we needed it. Oh, so. <laughs> and the flag's flying. But there's wind on the moon. The moon's very windy. <laughs> oh, the he's been there. The moon is not windy. Yes, it is very windy. It is not it windy. Is Otherwise, whoa, whoa, whoa. they'd Let's have built this. a windmill up there well, or something like that. I'm prepared to go <laughs> toe-to-toe with the hardest man in England on this one. <laughs> it's bloody windy up there. Wind? Wind is no, air blowing around, you yeah. see. <laughs> it's air 
blowing about. That's right, That's air on the moon. Wind, mate. It comes it in your face in the air. Of course, there's there air, on the, air on the moon. Let's all no. just take a moment. Right. There's air. There's no oxygen on the moon. There is air. It just hasn't got any oxygen in it. And it What's gets it made of then? The yogurt? What's it made of then? Yogurt. <laughs> Other stuff. <laughs> you would make the best science professor in the world. <laughs> Other stuff. <laughs> Moony <Moulier>. air. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> On their first mission, 75% of astronauts what? Play with their own piss, like this. Woo, woo! <laughs> woo, woo, woo. <laughs> they eat the packed lunch before they get to the stratosphere. <laughs> Nothing left for the rest, now. Demand a lot of air miles from NASA. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you'll find there's no air up there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's air. It's moon air. <laughs> We're doing a whole series about it soon. Yes. It's about moon air. <laughs> Or, just for fun, one of them goes... Tss, can anyone hear that? <laughs> I bet at least one of them goes, are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's taken ages. <laughs> but you didn't have to do that in a northern accent. Yeah, I did, cos I was trying to be stupid. Uh... <laughs> It's something to do with their stomachs. Any thoughts? I wish they hadn't had a curry last night. Throw <laughs> <laughs> up! Throw up is exactly the right oh, answer. Well done, Griff. Yes, on their first mission, 75% of astronauts throw up. Of course, the other 25% blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Your related statistic, 16% of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscope. Do you that think that's true sense. or false? What are you? I'm a Virgo. Ha. What are you then, Fiona? I'm a Piscean. A Piscean? Least likely to kill somebody in your family if you're a Piscean. Least likely to kill someone. You are clutching at straws. <laughs> Here's some advice: don't put that in a personal ad. <laughs> Tom uh, Bowers. Apart from the magpies, obviously. You're gonna see two magpies, haven't That's you? That's typical. You're in this <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on. You must see two magpies every day, surely. Uh, several. Would you call yourself lucky? Absolutely. Every time I go past a building site, somebody goes. <laughs> I like you. Come on, then you get hey, lucky. Bill! Bill, come here! <laughs> I want to make love to you, Bill! I don't think it's ever happened before, but I imagine this weekend it's going to be happening a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Builders, if you're watching, please. <laughs> for us. Can you make bird noises? I don't Some know. of them, yeah. I can make the one of, one of a bird hit yeah. the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only one I do, really. <laughs> I would like a chaffinch. Yeah. Oh, no, chaffinch, all right. It's like a fast bowler running up, and so he goes... Want to do 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 That's count, though. No, he comes up. Boom, 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 do 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 Well, that, that's what the, the bird makes that noise. <laughs> Did Bill just stand up, then? Amazing, that's extraordinary. A man actually gets out of his seat and is smaller than when he was sitting down. <laughs> Bill Oddy, I've had it up to here. <laughs> Have you really had Bill Oddie up to there? <laughs> <laughs> you bloody haven't. <laughs> yeah, I used to work on a building site late. <laughs> but you don't know what this one is. <laughs> this is for true, this is true. It goes... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's not an impression of a bird. It is! That's a midlife crisis, is no. what that is, Bill. <laughs> it's one of the best-loved birds in the country. Is it a uh, blackbird on a moped? <laughs> <laughs> It's a puffin. Uh, is it? Yes. Ah, very well loved. I'm always bumping into puffins. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just remind us, and I think you may find this amusing, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to remind you what the question is. 16% of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscopes. <laughs> true or false? The f*** are you people talking about? <laughs> You think it's true? Oh, yeah. What do you think? We you think, think it's true? false. The answer is true. Yeah. Did you know, for example, there are around 44 million bubbles in a bottle of champagne, and that statistic is brought to you by a scientist who was stood up on a date. <laughs> in 2005, it was made illegal to keep goldfish in goldfish bowls in Italy. So, that's goldfish sorted. Now, organised crime. <laughs> And the average woman will tell 28,000 lies in her lifetime. I don't know what my girlfriend would make of that. She's out with an old school friend tonight. <laughs> Apparently, she might have to stay over. <laughs> Let's get started.
Dave, Johnny and Christian, and what else have the nation be talking about this week? I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. I started. <laughs> and um, gripping stuff. Do you know who they all are, though? I mean, I, I, I watched Not them really last don't night. Care. I'm yeah. still quite puzzled about who they are. Yeah. Having watched them. It should be called I'm a Celebrity. No, honestly, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have, yeah, I've got an agent, haven't I? <laughs> well, Jan Leeming's on. Do you, do you know that? No, the thing I like about Jan Leeming is that she's obviously full of sh a lot of the time. She lied, you know, she lied about her task and made it out to be a lot worse than it really was. But everybody believes her because she's a newsreader. Yeah, and exactly. that is the great newsreader's luxury. You can talk total sh <laughs> really oh, <all> right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> I was actually asked to go on. Were you? I get asked every year and I'm that far away from Panto. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> would you ever think about it? I've thought about it, but in really vicious dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn up the first night, eat every bit of rice in the camp, stand there looking menacing, and then set your own camp up ten yards away going, <laughs> ONE OF YOU WILL DIE TONIGHT! <laughs> He's a very strange looking man. I saw a bit of it, that David Guest. He looks like a sort of muppet with alopecia. Just... <laughs> Fur's just fallen off slowly. <laughs> it's just this weird blob thing. It does look as it. if Paul Simon has melted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he cries through his ears, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know, one day, all, all the paper mashy things you made at school and discarded will rise up with him and start an army. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's there. <laughs> what else have people been talking about this week? Bond. Uh, James Bond. He's double O. Seven. And I like, uh David Guest. <laughs> I just like the, the use of the double O, seven, because I have a lot of trouble with O and zero. You've missed the point. It's not zero. That's why it's O. That's why it's not just seven. It's O, O, seven. So when you see me go, uh oh, seven. Uh -oh. Are you a Daniel Craig convert? Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's pathetic, isn't it's it? The, the way they all slagged him off beforehand and oh, then I turned know, around. Great. He's a real hunk. He emerges from the water. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't keep up this facade any longer. <laughs> he was in the National Youth Theatre around the same time as me, I think, and he... he, he <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, I thought we booked Christian Guru Murphy. <laughs> I know I was in the National Youth Theatre very briefly, but not as long as he was. As a newsreader? He used to get a lot of <laughs> big parts. Most of the Bonds couldn't act, could they? I mean, but he actually can. He's stolen a lot of your moves. <laughs> There's a thing where he punches someone in the neck and it's pure Christian Guru if Murphy. If things have been different, <laughs> classic. I've seen the film, I was there on the night. Oh, was it? How did you enjoy the premiere? Lovely, yeah. They're not that impressed, are they? You've got four million. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go to the premiere as well. But who couldn't go? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did go and I found myself turning to my brother who I brought along and going, oh, for f what are we waiting for? And he went, the Queen? <laughs> did she come round with the ice creams? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, I don't think she enjoyed it. Does she sit with everyone front, middle or back? I mean, where does she choose to front, sit? Front, middle or back? No, she's, yeah. <laughs> what the Queen does, what the Queen does, she sits on a massive throne in front of the screen so nobody can see it. <laughs> Big How does it look? She's moving it around. <laughs> sure, she was. Nobody saw a thing. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's there. Yes, it is. The most talked about thing this week. 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. Is that true or false? Is that an actual question that you would ask a talent show applicant? I think it's halfway it. through the rack. Who just go? I'll just chop your finger off. Do something. <laughs> I do it. What I do is I chop it off and stick like that and put the finger out my ear like that. <laughs> That's incredible. Or, or you could wrap it around your neck and use it to point at things. <laughs> <laughs> it's just around the corner, just over there. On the other side, the X Factor auditions though, going down the back, <laughs> block with a big bag, going fingers, the fingers, fingers. Come on, you just bending that. Fingers. Come on. You know, it's illegal to chop your finger off because it means you're not fit for military service. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> How did you come across that nugget of information? People tell me things and they stay in. Did you hear that, Nikki? Yeah. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> of course you weren't. Do you think it's an escalating scale of what, you, what limbs you have to lose to gain a certain degree of fame? Like Heather McCartney. She lost a whole leg. But she made a fortune. <laughs> What's his name? Lost his eyesight. Blunkett. <laughs> These are all things Nikki learned in part one. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. True or false? False. Okay, I can tell you 
that the answer is in fact true. Oh, shit. All right, calm well down. Done. <laughs> Not a lot of people, though, is it? No, well, I mean, it's quite mental, isn't it? 16% would go, yeah, I'll have a finger off just to sing for Simon Cow. Of course, once they've done it, they'll have to tell him to fuck off like this. <laughs> <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? Bollocks. <laughs> well, they can't find my details. I give me customer reference. I give me my days to my post my blood group. They can't find... Fuck off. Oh, the people that do the cold calling, you know, that ring you, I think that helps their love life, cos I always say, go and get fucked. <laughs> but some people do sound more sexy on the phone. Yeah, often people phone me up and they say, can we interest you in double glazing? Like, no, but you could certainly take me out to dinner. <laughs> Have you ever had phone sex? Fantastic. <laughs> I like the fact you know when the call's over. <laughs> and your mum walks in the room. Yeah. <laughs> she can't walk in the room, she's on the phone. <laughs> you know, in America, all the sex lines start with 900. And uh, the, the area code for Western Tennessee is 901. So you must get a lot of people in Western Tennessee just getting a misdial call. What am I wearing? Overalls. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, he's right here. Earl, it's for you. <laughs> All right. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? No, I think yes. We think yes. We, we think, think it's probably yeah. true. Right. Okay. I can tell you that the answer is true. Yay. Yes. <laughs> yes. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Call centres are weird things. Yeah, I need to go from Coventry to Ipswich on Saturday. I better call someone in Bangladesh. They'll know. <laughs> <laughs> on their first mission, 75% of astronauts what? Never left Earth. <laughs> Do you think they landed on the moon? Do you think that's a genuine thing? Nah. Well, you can see the shadows of the photos. Well, there's proof if ever we needed it. Oh, so. <laughs> And the flag's flying. But there's wind on the moon. The moon's very windy. Oh, the he's moon been there. is not windy. Yes, it is very windy. It is not it's windy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Otherwise, Let's they'd have built this. a windmill up there no, or something like that. I'm prepared to go toe to toe with the hardest man in England on this one. <laughs> it's bloody windy up there. Wind? Wind is no, air blowing around, you yeah. see. <laughs> it's air blowing about. That's yeah. right, it's That's air on why the moon. Why it makes it come in your face air. Of course, there's there air, on the, moon, air on the moon. There is air on the moon. Let's all no. just take a moment. Oh. There's air. There's no oxygen on the moon. Oh, there is air. It just hasn't got any oxygen in it. And it What's gets it made of then? Yogurt? What's it made of then? Have a star. You would make the best science professor in the world. Have a star. Moony air. Write it down. <laughs> On their first mission, 75% of astronauts what? Play with their own piss, like this. Woo, woo! <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> they eat the packed lunch before they get to the stratosphere. <laughs> Nothing left for the rest, now. Demand a lot of air miles from NASA. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you'll find there's no air uh, up there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's air. It's moon air. <laughs> series about it soon. Yes. Or, <laughs> just for fun, one of them goes... Tss, can anyone hear that? <laughs> I bet at least one of them goes, are we there yet? <laughs> it's taken ages. <laughs> but you didn't have to do that in a northern accent. Yeah, I did, cos I was trying to be stupid. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> It's something to do with their stomachs. Any thoughts? I wish they hadn't had a curry last night. <laughs> Throw up! Throw up is exactly the right oh, answer. Well done, Griff. Yes, on their first mission, 75% of astronauts throw up. Of course, the other 25% blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Your related statistic, 16% of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscope. Do you that think that's true sense. or false? What are you? I'm a Virgo. Ha. What are you then, Fiona? I'm a Piscean. A Piscean? Least likely to kill somebody in your family if you're a Piscean. Least likely to kill someone. You are clutching at straws. Close. Here's some advice. Don't put that in a personal ad. <laughs> so uh, forward. Apart from the magpies, obviously. You've got to see two magpies, haven't That's you? That's typical. You're in the <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on. You must see two magpies every day, surely. Uh, several. Would you call yourself lucky? Absolutely. Every time I go past a building site, somebody goes. 
<laughs> I like you. Come on, then you get hey, lucky. Bill! Bill, come here! <laughs> I want to make love to you, Bill! I don't think it's ever happened before, but I imagine this weekend it's going to be happening a lot. <laughs> Builders, if you're watching, please. For us. <laughs> Can you make bird noises? I don't Some know. of them, yeah. I can make the one of one of a bird yeah. hitting a pavement. <laughs> it's the only one I do, really. What would you like? I would like a chaffinch. Yeah. Oh, no, chaffinch, all right. It's like a fast bowler running up, and so he goes... That's you know. Kondo. No, he comes up. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Bowl. Well, that, that's what the, the bird makes that noise. <laughs> Did Bill just stand up then? Amazing, that's extraordinary. A man actually gets out of his seat and is smaller than when he was sitting down. <laughs> Bill Oddy, I've had it up to here. <laughs> Have you really had Bill Oddy up to there? <laughs> you bloody haven't. <laughs> yeah, I used to work on a building site late. <laughs> but you don't know what this one is. <laughs> this is for true, this is true. It goes... An impression of a bird. It is. That's a midlife crisis, is no. what that is, Bill. It's one of the best loved birds in the country. Is it a uh, blackbird on a moped? <laughs> <laughs> is, is it a forgetful sparrow? <laughs> uh... Remember it is. Oh, it's, it's a puffin. Uh, is it? Yes. Ah, very well loved. I'm always bumping into puffins. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just remind us, and I think you may find this amusing, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to remind you what the question is. 16% of bosses have made a decision based on their horoscopes, true or false. The f*** are you people talking about? <laughs> you think it's true? Oh, I... What do you think? We you think, think it's false. The answer is true. Yeah. Yay! 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. Is that true or false? Is that an actual question that you would ask a talent show applicant? I think it's halfway it's through the act. People just go, I'll just chop your finger off. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> I do it. What I do is I chop it off and stick like that and put the finger out my ear like that. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Or, or you could wrap it around your neck and use it to point at things. <laughs> <laughs> it's just around the corner, just over there. On the outside of the X Factor auditions, though, going down the back, <laughs> blot with a big bag, going fingers, your fingers, <laughs> fingers, come on, you, just bending that. Fingers, come on. You know, it's illegal to chop your finger off, because it means you're not fit for military service. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come across that nugget of information? People tell me things and they stay in. Did you hear that, Nikki? Yeah. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> of course you weren't. Do you think it's an escalating scale of what, you, what limbs you have to lose to gain a certain degree of fame, like Heather McCartney. She lost a whole leg. But she made a fortune. <laughs> What's his name? Lost his eyesight. Blunkett. <laughs> <laughs> These are all things Mickey learned in part one. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. True or false? False. OK, I can tell you that the answer is in fact true. Oh. All right, calm down. Well done. <laughs> it's not a lot of people, though, is it? Not well. I mean, it's quite mental, isn't it? Sixteen percent would go, yeah, I'll have a finger off just to sing for Simon Cow. Of course, once they've done it, they'll have to tend to f off like this. <laughs> 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 Here is your related statistic: thirty-eight percent of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? <laughs> well, they can't find my details. They give me customer reference. I give them my data, my postcode, my blood group. They can't find. F do the cold calling, you know, that ring you. I think that helps the love life, cos I always say, go and get f***ed. <laughs> but some people do sound more sexy on the phone. Yeah, often people phone me up and they say, can we interest you in double glazing? Like, no, but you could certainly take me out to dinner. <laughs> Have you ever had phone sex? Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I like the fact you know when the call's over. <laughs> and your mum walks in the room. Yeah. <laughs> she can't walk in the room, she's on the phone. <laughs> You know, in America, all the sex lines start with 900. And uh, the, the area code for Western Tennessee is 901. So you must get a lot of people in Western Tennessee just getting a misstyled call. What am I wearing? Overalls. <laughs> <laughs> My daddy's right here. Earl, it's for you. <laughs> all right. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? 
And now I think yes. We think yes. We we think think it's yeah, probably right. true. OK. I can tell you that the answer is true. Yay. Yes. <laughs> yes, 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Call centres are weird things. Yeah, I need to go from Coventry to Ipswich on Saturday. I better call someone in Bangladesh. They'll know. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about. Oh well, uh, I've been talking about the uh, this royal editor of the News of the World, Dave. Oh yeah, they've been listening in to people's phone calls. Yes, I was listening to stuff. But well, they've actually been tapping into the voicemail. That's how they do it. They hack into yeah. the voicemail and put some sort, sort of cord in. If you were phoning up a, a royal like Prince Charles, you wouldn't leave like an important message on voice. If he doesn't answer, you're not going to leave. It's not going to happen, is it? You're not going to hey. pick up any real news. It's not going to be like the Queen phoning Prince Charles and going, Hello, Charles, Mum here. I think I'll abdicate. Give us a ring later on. You know, it... <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? No, you'd but... text that, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> the Queen doesn't use a phone. She does? She doesn't use... No, she hasn't. She has a, a big chain of butlers and they just whisper messages along. <laughs> <laughs> Go for miles. <laughs> well, let's see if it's up there. <laughs> Yes, indeed it is. A News of the World journalist has admitted tapping royal phones. The journalist will soon be sending messages of his own to his cellmate in Morse code by clenching and unclenching his buttocks. <laughs> Was that a dot or a dash? Please get out of my bin. <laughs> Sean, over to you. What else have the nation been talking about this week? The Pope went to Turkey, which sounds like the start of a joke, doesn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> the Pope went to Turkey. <laughs> the Pope ate a turkey. <laughs> He went to Turkey and uh, there was a lot of protests. I think the interesting about it was, was when he looked at his diary on the Monday and he went, Turkey, Wednesday, who put this in? <laughs> it's dangerous for him to go to Turkey, though, because it's a very sunny country and uh, popes can die in those pope mobiles if the archbishop who's driving them doesn't crack the window. When he, uh, <laughs> Are you saying popes die in hot cars? Yeah. <laughs> popes die in hot pope mobiles. So that's what happens. That may be the most limiting safety campaign ever launched. If you can save just one, one life. life yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that the Pope isn't one of the most talked about things this week, but he did make an official visit to Turkey. The Pope, ever the diplomat, was very happy with the warm welcome he received. He said, at least I think it was a warm welcome, from what I could understand of their jibber-jabber language. <laughs> Figures or buzzers, what else have people been talking about this week? Uh, we think it's the fallout uh, from this KGB poisoning. That still rumbles on. There seems to be three suspects. It's either Putin and the Kremlin, it's either enemies of Putin and the Kremlin, who are trying to discredit him, or it's a group of ex-KGB spies led by a guy called Igor the Poisoner. <laughs> the police said the, the death was suspicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they should upgrade it to yeah. fucking suspicious. <laughs> Is he having a traditional Russian burial where they put them in a little coffin inside a bigger coffin? Is that a much bigger coffin? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're fine, Dave. A traditional Russian burial, you have to dig your own grave. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but don't blame me, blame Stalin. <laughs> no, on a serious note, we endangered that because it was on the planes. Yeah. It was in a bag. Yeah. yeah. In unless they put it in TK Maxx, you'll be fine. <laughs> They found it in yeah. a restaurant, they found it in two hotels. On a humpback whale. <laughs> <laughs> humpback whale's got a ten-foot dick, hasn't it? Sounds like the start of a song. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> oh, the humpback whale's got a ten-foot cock. Do da, do da. The humpback whale's got a ten-foot cock and it's all hard as a rock. That's I think, I... <laughs> I think I've won money on you singing in the first ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you have gone quite a long way to kill him. This is, it's a lot of effort, isn't it? Uh, to it kill somebody by radiation. Why don't we just you shoot him? No. Well. no we're going to kill him by radiation. I think maybe the KGB are having some kind of union issues with their snipers. <laughs> <laughs> the KGB, the interesting thing about this is the KGB aren't called the KGB anymore. They're called the FSB, which worries me, because I think I've bought a sofa from them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't want to sit on it. Let's see if the Russian poisoning is up there. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I think it's this great story that the NHS are going to offer dance lessons to fatties, basically, isn't it? They're going to help them with the obesity crisis. But the only way you're going to get fat people on the dance floor, I think, is by making the announcement, the buffet is now open. <laughs> Just across the dance floor, though. And it's, a, it's another government gimmick, isn't it? It must be awful to see, like, here, like, a fat person dance. I'm not being over, but, you know, like, the... Uh, 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 well, that's the shoes on. <laughs> 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 you know, it's going to be a slow process. <laughs> <laughs> and he sent 
people talking about fatties like this. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. belong to Overeaters Anonymous. Really? Yes, this is the truth. And it's a, it, it's very, a lot of you here are thin, so, <laughs> but it is very, very sad because we all sit there and the women cry, cry and they go, no one loves me. And I always say, yes, yes, your butcher loves you. Your, your, your baker loves you. And one woman, I mean, last week, which right before I came over here, she was saying things like, I went on an airplane and she was sobbing. And she said, and they made me buy two seats and she just cried and then i said yes but now you can have two meals and she perked up <laughs> <laughs> if we want to be fat god damn it we can be fat that's the way it goes so, david mean, are you do you do you dance no i have a i have a cousin you have a cousin yeah <laughs> i have a cousin good answer i have yeah. a cousin 279 pounds 279 pounds he started ballroom dancing fred astaire studio Met right. this lovely woman, five months, lost 100 pounds, got syphilis, and died. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if that's not being made into a musical, yeah. I... I'm too cool dancing, too literally, I think, really. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, uh, let's have a look and see whether uh, fatty dance glasses is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Yes, it is. Oh, just crap. Yes, it was. Yes! Oh, just Sure, David, Aaron, uh, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I imagine a lot of people are quite upset uh, about England losing the Ashes. Well, I mean, virtually losing, losing the second test. And uh, I, think, I think it's stupid, really, because what we invented the game, we should just change the rules to suit us. <laughs> so, in that match, we should have said, ah, ah, yeah, we just made this new rule up. If we have tomato soup, lowest score wins. <laughs> <laughs> So just stuff like that, just make up rules. If it's cloudy, oh, uh, no, you can't lose on a cloudy day. Just anything. <laughs> you make the sport up, you can do what you want. You're not wearing the right pants. We win. <laughs> My dad tried to get me... He's always trying to get me sporting. He tried to get me interested in cricket, right? And I hate cricket, it's so boring. He told me that the Ashes, yeah, were Ellen Daniels from Neighbours. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously a spark of interest And I was there. like... Ellen Daniels, you say. And I was hooked. <laughs> Joan, have you ever seen a cricket match? I hate sports. You hate sports? I go to tennis matches, I don't even turn my head, you know. The ball doesn't come back, that idiot missed it. I mean, it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like sports. Yeah. I don't like sport either. Really? Well, yeah. Because you look like quite a sporty... <laughs> yeah. Do you I not, get... Have you not been... I you just... work out though, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, In I... indie clubs. <laughs> You big cricket fan, David? You, you aware of cricket? No, more baseball. More baseball. Yeah. Have you heard of cricket? Of course. He forgets I was in the outback and I yeah. just it was with all these crickets all over there. Yeah. You knew Fina, right? Um, well, I didn't actually watch... I, I meant to watch it, but um, at okay. the last minute I fell pregnant. <laughs> So it's been quite a few, quite a few crazy weeks for me as well. So uh, <laughs> turns out it was a scare. But no, no. What did she do? What did Fina do? She stole all the food. She stole all the food. Yeah. Really? She ate a few crickets too. Did she? Yeah. People have to eat testicles, don't they? No, it was an anus. Matt, it? Matt ate an anus. Someone had to eat an anus. Yeah. Oh, Matt. Matt ate an, ate, an ate an anus. Matt ate an anus. Yes. I see. I thought you said a marinated anus. No. A second. <laughs> no. We had no, no, nothing, nothing to marinate there. <laughs> what do you eat it like a hula hoop like that? <laughs> <laughs> On I'm a Celebrity, you claimed your maid's name was Vagina Kasiman. Is that true? Yes. Is she real? She's real. Are you sure she's I'm real? I'm positive she's as real as this set is real. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> her mother, and this is the truth, her mother loved her body part so much, she said if she had a girl, she was going to name it Vaginica. Then, no, this is true, not noble. <laughs> then she married... <laughs> A guy named Harry Seaman. Harry Seaman. And she became Vagina Seaman. What's her middle name? I have no idea. She hasn't got a middle name. I suppose she doesn't need one, really. <laughs> Mostly when she tells, tells her name, she's probably just wiping the drink they've just spat in her face. <laughs> <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> Let's get back to the ashes. Should we have a look and see whether the ashes is one of the most talked about things this week? In Sean, Louis and Reese, what have the nation been talking about this week? Four-year-old girl's depressed. She's a bit down. And uh, she took to the doctor and they said, he said, yes, she's depressed. Instead of, what he should have done, actually, when he went to her, he should have listened to all her symptoms, he should have gone, hold on a sec, 
Boom. <laughs> uh, I think you're fine. <laughs> Apparently, the reason this girl is depressed is because she didn't get into the right primary school. Mm. Mm. That was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the reason she didn't get in is because her parents didn't put the application in time. So the reason she's depressed is, she, is that her parents are a couple of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you can say. She tried to slit her wrist with stickle bricks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a nice image, yeah. She put her head in the oven, but it's one of those little plastic ones, it's fine. <laughs> I, when I was four, I used to get Randy, I used to rub myself against a chair leg. <laughs> and my mum said, stop that, it's naughty. And my dad said, don't tell him to don't stop, he's Welsh. He said, don't tell him to stop, because he might go funny in the head. And I think I did it till I was about 14. <laughs> I would get on a chair leg and rub like that. Rub <laughs> <laughs> on the chair leg and... Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> How they spotted it? I mean, I don't know how they actually identified her depression. I She's not listening to, you know, Leonard Cohen in a room. <laughs> <laughs> to sort of sit up there smoking. I mean, there's... I think uh, she, she, she's up in her room listening to the Tweenies' very difficult second album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether this four-year-old depressed girl is one of the most talked-about things of the week. Oh, it is. Ooh, yeah. That's good. This is the story of the four-year-old girl who's depressed about not getting into the right primary school. It's not uncommon for small children to get depressed. I know a baby who cries all day and can't get out of bed. <laughs> Doctors knew something was seriously wrong when she stopped laughing at the Chuckle Brothers. To me, to you, to me, to you. What's the point? Keep it. <laughs> Dave Steen, uh, what else have the nation been talking about this Rich. week? Uh, I guess the American midterm elections. Um, People's excited too that uh, Rumsfeld resigned and just so what? <laughs> Bush is not real. But the people who, who who back Bush, those are the dangerous people. You don't never see them. You know, getting upset with Bush is like some kid coming up to me with a puppet and going, you know, out of my way, d and I going, you damn puppet, I hate you. Ned <laughs> <laughs> Landon made me smile. Said Democrats spell disaster for Bush. <laughs> He can't spell for <laughs> <shits>, can he? <laughs> Apparently, the reason, the reason they lost was because of the war in Iraq. It's cost them a billion a week. Yeah, a billion pounds a week. Yeah, who's bloody paying for it, eh? It's us. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Have you thought about writing for the Daily Mail? <laughs> you don't seem to understand much, but you seem sort of upset about it. And that's, <laughs> those are, I think, the key things. If my mum buys the Daily Mail, right, only because the ink doesn't come off on your hands. <laughs> you know what's keeping it there? Well, hate. Yeah. <laughs> Louis, what, what do you make of the midterm elections, I imagine? Jimmy, I just... I've never been a fan of Bush. Hey, You've never been a fan of Bush? <laughs> God bless you for your honesty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Schwarzenegger got back in again as well. Yeah. Oh, Which is always yeah. astonishing. Did you hear what he said when he got back in? I love sequels. <laughs> oh, if he loves sequels, why doesn't he go and make Kindergarten Cop 2? <laughs> I always felt that that never resolved and properly, that film, at the end. What a great film. <laughs> I used to like, you know, Schwarzenegger movies back in the 80s. And that, something bothered me about those movies were like, he would be in, playing these American roles and no one would notice he sounded different. And as racist as America is, he would have been like, pff, pff, Billy, let's get out of here. Well, let's have a look and see if the midterm elections are one of the most talked about things this week. Oh, back in the way. Back in the way. 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. Is that true or false? Is that an actual question that you would ask a talent show applicant? I think it's halfway it's through the rack. People just go, I'll just chop your finger off. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> I do it. What I do is I chop it off and stick like that and put the finger out my ear like that. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> or, or you could wrap it around your neck and use it to point at things. <laughs> <laughs> it's just around the corner, just over there. On the outside of the X Factor auditions, though, going down the back, <laughs> block with a big bag, going, fingers, the fingers, <laughs> fingers, come on, you, just bending that. Fingers, come on. <laughs> you know, it's illegal to chop your finger off because it means you're not fit for military service. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> How did you come across that nugget of information? People tell me things and they stay in. Did you hear that, Nikki? Yeah. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> of course you weren't. Do you think it's an escalating scale of what, you, what limbs you have to lose to gain a certain degree of fame? Like Heather McCartney. She lost the whole leg. Did but she made a fortune. <laughs> What's his name? Lost his eyesight. Blunkett. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> These are all things Mickey learned in part one. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? 16% of talent show applicants say they would be prepared to lose a finger for a shot at fame. True or false? False. OK, I can tell you that the answer is, in fact, true. Oh. Shit. All right, calm well down. Well done. <laughs> Not a lot of people, though, is it? No, well, I mean, it's quite mental, isn't it? 16% would go, yeah, I'll have a finger off just to sing for Simon Cow. Of course, once they've done it, they'll have to tend to fuck off like this. <laughs> <laughs> Here is your related statistic. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? Bollocks. <laughs> well, they can't find my details. I give them my customer reference. I give them my data, my post, my blood group. They can't find fuck off. Oh, the people that do the cold calling, you know, that ring you, I think that helps their love life, cos I always say, go and get fucked. <laughs> but some people do sound more sexy on the phone. Yeah, often people phone me up and they say, can we interest you in double glazing? Like, no, but you could certainly take me out to dinner. <laughs> Have you ever had phone sex? Fantastic. Yeah. I like the fact you know when the call's over. <laughs> and your mum walks in the room. Yeah. <laughs> she can't walk in the room, she's on the phone. <laughs> you know, in America, all the sex lines start with 900. And uh, the, the area code for Western Tennessee is 901. So you must get a lot of people in Western Tennessee just getting a misstyled call. What am I wearing? Overalls. <laughs> <laughs> My daddy's right here. Earl, it's for you. <laughs> All right. 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Is that true or false? No, I think yes. We think yes. We, we think, think it's probably yeah. true. Right. OK. I can tell you that the answer is true. Yay. Yes. <laughs> yes, 38% of call centre staff claim that their job has helped them find romance. Call centres are weird things. Yeah, I need to go from Coventry to Ipswich on Saturday. I better call someone in Bangladesh. They'll know. Jimmy, <laughs> <laughs> turtles can't jump. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to go back to a point you made. Uh, uh, turtles don't jump. They do if you throw them on a trampoline. <laughs> oh, I think people have probably been talking about Madonna adopting a baby in Africa. Uh, she's adopted a baby, it's caused a lot of fuss. Well, he has kind of won the orphanage lottery, hasn't he? I imagine if they had a regular lottery <laughs> in the or orphanage, they had scratch cards. They went, oh, you're going to be saved by Madonna. <laughs> he should have been disqualified yeah. earlier because he wasn't an orphan. It was like an African orphan idol. <laughs> she noted into the last 12, she went over for the final, which was this last week. It was some sort of contest, like a Bonnie Baby contest. Went to the local war with in Malawi, had the picture set and all that. <laughs> but he, he should have been disqualified because he's not an orphan. The kid's it not an orphan. It does seem weird that he's got a dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he said in the press that the, the saddest thing about it is the fact that he's going to be in the papers every day. So that Madonna and Guy won't get the luxury that other adoptive parents have, which is to tell him exactly what happened in their own time. But I can't help thinking from a very early age he's going to realise, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> to like 10 or 11 and go, uh, listen, something's not right here. <laughs> Mum, Dad, two questions. One, are you my real parents? And two, how come there's no mirrors in this house? <laughs> I thought it was quite funny. She bought him a £5,000 rocking horse. I'd really like to see that comic relief appeal with it. Just £5,000 and get a rocking horse for a child in Africa. <laughs> the other thing she did was she decorated his room in a jungle style. <laughs> it's true, that's a questionable taste, I think. <laughs> Why does she just adopt, like, uh, 60,000 orphan kids and then she's a total sellout wherever she goes? <laughs> that is thinking, Rich. They don't know that American Pie is a f <laughs> You're still angry about American Pie? <laughs> I was angry about it the first time I heard it. I need her to trot it out again 20 years later. All 73 verses. But I'll tell you something else. Snakes can't jump. <laughs> Madonna can't sing. Madonna can't sing? <laughs> Nikki, what do you think of Madonna? She's a bit high maintenance. I like her, but to be honest, a whole week's news on her adopting the child. Oh. Who cares? <laughs> on, you're a big brother. <laughs> So were you looking for more news about what was going on in Kazakhstan this week? I'm not getting the bottom of this, just Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. <laughs> but you've managed to get more attention than Madonna in a very short space of time, so you're more fabulous. Oh, thanks, boy. 
Rachel. I thought, you know, her performance at Live Aid was when she was swearing. And I thought, well, that's not a very good, you know, exe example to set to your kids. Because she actually showed it at Live Aid, she went on stage and said, Oh, you f***. You think, that's what she's going to be like on the school run. Are <laughs> 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 you f***ing me, Lord? Dave! She's an English lady now. She's an English lady. Yeah. She's fooling no one. <laughs> the fellow, Jimmy, don't you claim to be Irish? <laughs> I don't claim, I try and hide it, mate. How dare you? Huh? I'm Irish. I'm about as Irish as you. I'm more Irish than you'll ever be. What? what? Well, go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't go down a mock more shade of hell. I talk to the love. Pogue he... Mahone. Yeah. <laughs> it's my house as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK, well, let's have a look and see if Madonna's adoption is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> cool. David, Aaron, uh, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I imagine a lot of people are quite upset uh, about England losing the Ashes. Well, virtually losing, losing the second test. And uh, I, think, I think it's stupid, really, because what we invented the game, we should just change the rules to suit us. <laughs> so, in that match, we should have said, ah, ah, yeah, we just made this new rule up. If we have tomato soup, lowest score wins. <laughs> <laughs> So just stuff like that, just make up rules. If it's cloudy, oh, uh, no, you can't lose on a cloudy day. Just anything. You know, you make the sport up, you can do what you want. You're not wearing the right pants. We win. <laughs> My dad tried to get me... He's always trying to get me sporting. He tried to get me interested in cricket, right? And I hate cricket, it's so boring. He told me that the Ashes, yeah, were Ellen Daniels from Neighbours. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not obviously a spark of interest there. And I was there. like... Ellen Daniels, you say? <laughs> I was hooked. Joan, have you ever seen a cricket match? I hate sports. You hate sports? I go to tennis matches, I don't even turn my head, you know? The ball doesn't come back, that idiot missed it. I mean, it, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I don't like sports. Yeah. Well, I don't like sport either. Really? Well, yeah. Because you look like quite a sporty... <laughs> yeah. Do you I not, get... Have you not been... I you get... work out there, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, In I... indie clubs. <laughs> You're a big cricket fan, David? You, you aware of cricket? No, more baseball. More baseball. Yeah. Have you heard of cricket? Of course. He forgets I was in the outback and I yeah. just it was with all these crickets all over there. Yeah. You knew Fina, right? Um, well, I didn't actually watch... I meant to watch it, but um, at okay. the last minute I fell pregnant. <laughs> So it's been quite a few, quite a few crazy weeks for me as well. So uh, <laughs> turns out it was a scare. But no, no. What did she do? What did Fina do? She stole all the food. She stole all the food. Yeah. Really? She ate a few crickets too. Did she? Yeah. People have to eat testicles, don't they? On that no, it's an anus. Matt, it? Matt ate an anus. Someone had to eat an anus. Yeah. Oh, Matt. Matt ate, ate anus. an anus. Matt ate an anus. Yeah. I see. I thought you said a marinated anus. No. For a second. <laughs> no. We had no, no, nothing, it nothing to marinate there. <laughs> what do you eat it like a hula hoop like that? <laughs> On I'm a Celebrity, you claimed your maid's name was Vagina Kasiman. Is that true? <laughs> yes. Is she real? She's real. Are you sure she's I'm real? I'm positive she's as real as this set is real. <laughs> mm. <laughs> her mother, and this is the truth, her mother loved her body part so much, she said if she had a girl, she was going to name it Vaginica. Then, no, this is true, not noble. <laughs> then she married... <laughs> A guy named Harry Seaman. Harry Seaman. <laughs> she became Vagina Seaman. What's her middle name? I have no idea. She hasn't got a middle name. I suppose she doesn't need one, really. <laughs> Mostly when she tells, tells her name, she's probably just wiping the drink they've just spat in her face. <laughs> 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 Let's get back to the ashes. Shall we have a look and see whether the ashes is one of the most talked about things this week? Incredibly, it's the second yes. most talked about thing. The Ashes is a best of five, although England have controversially opted to play worst of three. <laughs> and what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it the moon? <laughs> is it the moon? They're going <laughs> to build a permanent base on the moon. It's going to take $10 billion, isn't it, to get people up to the moon. And you just know that if you go on the internet, EasyJet are doing it for £17.50. <laughs> One way, no hand luggage, and Stelius going, it's out of this world. <laughs> 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 Joan Rivers, do you think Americans should be spending this kind of money going to the moon? I think to spend $10 billion to go to the moon is disgusting. They should spend on something important like jewellery. You could get <laughs> three...
really nice pieces of my jewellery on QVC. <laughs> You've already cut what to the core of this have? issue, I think. A great ring or some stupid trip to the moon. Who gives a f I couldn't care less. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's up there. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. Did you know, for example, 60% of cosmetic surgery patients are disappointed with the results, although they look pleasantly surprised? <laughs> A quarter of the over 50s are failing to save. It's control S, you old buffers. <laughs> and one in four Brits claims that their post has been lost or stolen. Well, I can reassure you, it was definitely stolen. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellists' job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking point. I <laughs> <laughs> definitely needed an S on the end of it, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, that, that, the talking point. <laughs> Do the S again. <laughs> yeah, <it's... laughs> Could be one of mine. <laughs> Dave, Jade and Chris, what have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, take that aback with the uh, Inland Revenue Tour, I think it is, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's not front page news, surely to God. It's <laughs> they've got, no, the Beatles have got a hit album. Oh, right? hang on, there's a lady going through the menopause as we speak. <laughs> That's how take that fan speak. What? At news they just go, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> how are you today? Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> you want a cup of tea? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Childline set up a, a hotline right after Take That yeah. split up. In 1996, the Samaritans set up a special helpline for yeah. distraught fans. Yes. It's the only time the Samaritans have ever been allowed to use the words, oh, grow up. <laughs> 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 On the phone. Just f***ing <laughs> grow up. <laughs> Why are they called Take That? What's the name mean? On their video, they had the thing saying, if you don't like it, throw it in the bin. Take that. That's my favourite thing you've ever said. <laughs> Those are the instructions that come with their video. Well, they said it, they said it. I'm honest, I watched it in my caravan with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yes. I imagine that was a party. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if Take That at number one is up there. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, Take That have returned to the top of the charts. The reunion took longer than expected to put together because no one could remember who Howard was. <laughs> They spent six months rehearsing with a bloke from the Halifax advert. <laughs> Vic, Sean and John, what have the nation been talking about this week? I think they're talking about Michael Grade going from the uh, BBC over to ITV. You know, they're saying he got something like eight million and he's saying he didn't do it for the money. No. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> he's genuinely saying that, though. He's kind of come yeah. out in the press and gone, it's not about the money. You don't... I don't do a job for the money. What the hell do you do it for? He said, he said he did it for the challenge. The challenge being getting all that money home in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> ITV said it was a real coup. It's not, is it? No. A real coup would be when ITV's tanks actually roll into television centre. <laughs> that would be... A real coup. That would be an actual coup. <laughs> ITV have done it because ITV apparently is not doing very well at the moment. So they've stolen Chief from stealing. Channel One. Stolen, I mean. Stolen. <laughs> Chief from Channel One to come over and do it. But what really muddles my brain is... <laughs> <laughs> what muddles your brain? No, what muddles my brain is if they've got all that money to offer him, why don't they just make better TV programmes? <laughs> I hope he finally ends Coronation Street, cos this first series is really dragging on. <laughs> <laughs> You know what he's doing to Coronation Street? What? He's changing. He's going to be CSI Weatherfield. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yes, indeed it is. Yes, Michael Grave has announced he's moving to ITV. ITV needs him. They're in trouble. I tried to tape the mint the other night and my Sky Plus box started crying. <laughs> More revelations in the McCartney divorce proceedings. All that business rumbles oh, on, doesn't I'll it? I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be the fella that introduced them. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. <laughs> I introduced Heather Mills to Paul McCartney. 
Why? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what he's asking. Well, she's, don't you think she's awful, Heather Mills? Now, I actually oh, yeah. quite stick up for her, but it's awful, isn't it? Yeah. But he's Paul McCartney. You know, he wrote yesterday. She's Heather Mills. And today, a... and he'll probably write tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he's a relentless worker. <laughs> I think, though, well, I think the obvious thing, though, is, is that mostly when you meet a very beautiful woman, you assume there's a catch. There must be a catch. It can't be this good. And he thought the catch was the leg. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but she's incredibly unpopular for someone with one leg. She's first, it's like Blunkett, isn't it? He's blind. You think people like him. Everyone thinks he's a you, you don't like her, do you? I have to stand up for her. People would say, why? And now you think, why? Well, because she couldn't stand up but, herself, right? But, but, <laughs> but, 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 but when you think about it, she hasn't really done anything. What She's people greedy. Forget, she, We're all greedy. She's greedy. She had to hump that old man. He smells like dust. Aww. <laughs> right? This would never have happened to the Stones. None of the Stones would have ever married a one-legged nutter. <laughs> <laughs> The one thing he said was, yeah. she threw a bottle of ketchup That's at him. Right. And he's still not got it out of his hair, has he? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that, I like the way even celebrities can't have an argument without doing some product placement. You know, it's like, oh, he threw some Heinz ketchup at me. <laughs> and then he put some Marmite bottles in a sock and hit me over the head and tried to choke me with Jaffa cakes and spray Jiff in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I someone said the other day, who gets the leg? Because... No, more importantly, who gets a disabled parking voucher? Well... <laughs> That's worth ten million. We're all polling here. Who's with Heather? <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Uh, well, let's have a look and see whether Paul McCartney is up there. Yes, the McCartney divorce is getting increasingly bitter. Heather Mills has denied she's a fantasist in a statement released by her lawyer, Rumpole of the Bailey. <laughs> Right, Sean, Kirsty, and Scott, what else have the nation been talking about this week? I think they've been talking about John Reid's come out tough again. He's tough on... Now he's tough on immigration. He's going to restrict the amount of Romanians and Bulgarians that can come here to work. Basically, loads of people... Loads of Polish people came over here two or three years ago and are doing, you know, doing all the jobs like cleaning and yeah, building. They're giving, they're giving British Labourers a bad name, aren't they? Because they're efficient, on time, <laughs> cheap... <laughs> Polite. It's a disgrace. They, sh they should all be sent home. It's disgusting. <laughs> they can have a thousand pound fine, aren't they, for any Bulgarians caught working? Well, all they have to do is put on a posh accent, don't they? They learn to speak very posh English. They say, Are you Bulgarian? Of course I'm not. Don't be so ridiculous, man. <laughs> How do you think I got this job? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you. I, I only employ Eastern Europeans if I can possibly do so because they just do the job and work hard. Do you run a brothel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look and see if this is one of the most talked about things of the week? <laughs> hey! Uh, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it uh, Wayne Rooney and his new uh, £100,000 mega deal with Manchester United? I love the way that every time Wayne Rooney gets a new deal, we see a picture within 24 hours of Colleen yeah. grinning her head off with 27 <laughs> bags of shopping. <laughs> I've got to say, she's earned it. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the problem with these deals is they, that, that they're not launches all these people going, oh, they get paid too much. Uh, but and then the footballers counter up by saying, yeah, but the fans, they're always shouting nasty things at me. And you're like, for 100 grand a week, I'd stay in the middle of the pitch at Wembley for two weeks and let you shout nasty things at me. <laughs> but you're not bad. Yeah, I don't know. One, no. two, three. <laughs> Can I get an account balance, please? Your mum's a knobhead, yeah, but you should see her house. <laughs> <laughs> she bought him a £30,000 watch for his birthday and a Louis Vuitton man bag and a gold set from Argos. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the girl out of Liverpool, but you can't get the catalogue off her, can you? <laughs> she also got him a picture of Robbie Williams's. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's, doing a, he's doing a Mooney, yeah. and there's a danger that he'll mistake it for a mirror, yeah. isn't there? <laughs> I thought it was a portrait, because the eye kept following him around the room. Wow. <laughs> she got all these brilliant people, Mike Tyson, to sign things, you two, and Blue. <laughs> They're not even together, are they? A Blue not together? <laughs> oh, sorry, Jimmy. Oh, what a way to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Wayne Rooney's up there. Yes, it is. <laughs> Yes. 
Wayne Rooney turned 21 this week. He received an Aston Martin priceless sporting memorabilia and a £30,000 watch. I tell you what, though, he would have been happier with a tyre and a rope. <laughs> We've got one more thing to guess. Fingers on buzzers. What else? Sean. Is it the uh, Richmond Council's decision to charge four by fours lots of money to park? Tell me more about this. What do you think of it? I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't live in London. Yeah. And I like it. You like it? Yes. Well, that's fine, then. <laughs> they're the most privileged people in society, usually people who have four by fours, and then suddenly they're a victim. It's like, why are they picking on me? <laughs> Just because I've got them four by four. I think it should be more. It should be a thousand pounds. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. You, the, the, you get let off the fine and all that, but they're encouraging these electric cars. Tell me again, how oh, do you make electricity? It's not exactly a clean fuel, is it? The way they make electricity, <laughs> those big power stations, there's thousands of blokes with full heads of hair and balloons going like that. <laughs> <laughs> just thousands of them. Dwarves. It's funny about dwarves. Thousands of dwarves. <laughs> balloons. <laughs> I think they should call it, um, you know, they've got names for these taxes that they, that they put in. They should just call it the <laughs> tax. <laughs> and, uh, That's a bit hard. I know. They, they should put fat boy, easy. That's 2 2 nil. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm on, defending man. the pregnant lady. I started it. No, I, like, I like the fat guy. Go on. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah. This is like a pub car park. <laughs> Leave it. It's not worth it. Dude. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the new 4x4 tax is one of the most talked about things. <laughs> yes, it is. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. Here's your first question. 17% of church leaders think if Jesus came back to Earth now, he would what? Be very old. <laughs> he definitely points out that the Da Vinci Code is a load of b****s. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't marry Mary Magdalene. Moved to France. I hate France. <laughs> I think he'd be a bit too soapboxy. A little know-it-all-y. Don't you think? No. Oh. <laughs> Clear what you're on about, Scott. <laughs> Do you think if he came back, he would be sectioned on the first day? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Jesus Christ. Right, come with us. <laughs> Have a nice cup of tea and a sit down. <laughs> Who's to say I haven't come back? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. That is an exclusive. Of course, claiming to be Jesus is quite insulting to the Christians, but it doesn't really matter. They don't take it that seriously. <laughs> they're, they're probably out there now thinking, if I get hold of that Sean Locke, I'm going to bloody well forgive him. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a clue on this one. It's, uh, it's, it's about his choice of vehicle. Uh, He'd have his own jet. He'd have hover boots. Mm. <laughs> Classic hippie-ish. Is it a VW, VW van? Yeah. Exactly the right answer. Oh! <laughs> yeah, this is 17% of church leaders think if Jesus came back to Earth now, he would drive a camper van. I suppose it's better that Jesus Christ has a camper van rather than a Yamaha. You don't want him doing a skid and killing a kid and busting his <laughs> on a dustbin lid. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. I started. And um, gripping stuff. Do you know who they all are, though? I mean, I, I, I watched oh, them last I don't night. Care. I'm yeah. still quite puzzled about who they are. Yeah. Having watched it. It should be called I'm a Celebrity. No, honestly, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have, yeah, I've got an agent, haven't I? Well, Jan Leeming's on. Do you, do you know that? No, the thing I like about Jan Leeming is that she's obviously full of shit all the time. She lied, you know, she lied about her task and made it out to be a lot worse than it really was. But everybody believes her because she's a newsreader. Yeah, and exactly. that is the great newsreader's luxury. You can talk total shit. <laughs> I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> I was actually asked to go on. Were you? I get asked every year and I'm that far away from Panto. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever think about it? I've thought about it, but in really vicious dreams. <laughs> Just turn up the first night, eat every bit of rice in the camp. Stand there looking menacing and then set your own camp up ten yards away going, ONE OF YOU WILL DIE TONIGHT! <laughs> He's a very strange looking man. I saw a bit of it, that David Guest. He looks like a sort of Muppet with alopecia. Just, <laughs> the fur's just fallen off slowly. It's just this weird blob it, it thing. It does look as it. if Paul Simon has melted. Yeah. <laughs> he cries through his ears, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know what, one day, all, all the paper mashy things you made at school and discarded will rise up with him and start an army. <laughs> Do you want to have a look at him? He looks like his plastic surgery's been done specifically so he can appear in Aladdin, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's gone to the plastic surgeon and said, I want to work in Panto. <laughs> I like him, I think You he, like him? He's great. I think he's great entertainment.
Don't you agree with that? Well, yeah, that's like, I mean, there's lots of great documentaries about Hitler. Well, I, this man is nothing like Hitler. He's done nothing wrong. He's, I, I vote for him. I want him on the Bush Tucker trial. <laughs> I've got him. I'm literally I'm obsessed with seeing him repeatedly on television. I like David Guest. Is he very gay? Is who very gay? Is he very gay? Well, Michael. No, no don't do that. <laughs> Well, in fairness, in fairness, you are wearing a pink shirt and saying, I love David Guest. <laughs> I'm mentioning my sexuality to Jimmy. Like, Jimmy knows of my sexuality? Jimmy knows. <laughs> He's definitely gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, to, get, to, to get on this show, you have to have a medical with Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> my wife is obviously squirming uh, watching this. Thinking, He's... oh, my God, I've married a gay. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's there. Thank <laughs> you.